Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. Guess what I have this week? This is the Rivian R1S three-road fully electric SUV. And it's perhaps one of the most exciting entries I've ever come across in many decades of testing vehicles. And this thing can rocket to 60 miles per hour in just over three seconds, which is like a Porsche 911 territory. There's so many things I want to tell you about this. I don't even know where to start, but I will do the full quality audit as I always do as an engineer and tell you many things about this uh, electric SUV that you might not be aware of. In fact, I'm going to tell you 25 interesting things about this Rivian R1S. Let's go. Welcome back. So let's do the quality audit right away, which is the first thing I want to point out about the Rivian R1S, which I really love because it's just a beautiful, beautiful SUV. I wish Lexus would bring something like this earlier. I'm sure they will come up with it a few years down the road, but it's going to be a while yet. Let's take a look at the uh, gap here, which is not too bad. Uh, about 3.8 millimeter here, 4.2 millimeter there, which is a little bit wider than what I would like to see, but here is very good. Three millimeter in the front, between the front fender and the front door, and 3.8 between the front door and the rear door, and one more time between the rear door and the rear fender, 3.9. So actually pretty well standard compared to most uh, North American produced vehicles. I would rate it as sort of a, a little bit above average in terms of the gaps and, and, and fit. But uh, in terms of panel alignment, it's actually quite good. Everything lines up pretty well. All the lines here also lines up really well. And the paint job, which I'll talk about in a second, is also looking pretty good. Let's just walk around quickly here to see if I notice anything else in terms of plastic components or any of these gaps. No, they all look actually very good. So the overall quality is better than expected from my perspective. What about the paint job? So as I mentioned, I'm gonna take a look along the corners here and the matching the plastic pieces to the aluminum panel pieces and the paint matching is excellent sometimes these kind of plastic pieces uh, they don't match very well with the body uh, paint but in their case uh, the paint all looks really uniform and consistent so my second point is that the paint quality is uh, definitely above average i would say that perhaps in terms of clear coat maybe it would have been nice to have a little bit more uh, which I'm sure will show up in the paint thickness when I measure it, but uh, otherwise it's pretty good. So let's uh, go into my third point, which is check for the paint uh, thickness and see how it compares with others. So I got my paint thickness gauge, which measures the total amount of paint thickness above the sheet metal, and in the case of Rivian, it's pretty well aluminum pieces here, uh, but um, obviously the thicker the paint, the better in terms of long-term reliability, but as long as it's sort of between 100 to 150 microns, it's okay. So let's measure the paint thickness here. 147 for uh, the hood here, which is actually pretty good. It's nice and thick. 106 on the front fender. 106, exactly the same, which is a good sign. And a little bit thicker on the rear door. And finally, one more. 120. So right in the sort of a median among all the models I've tested, it's between 100 to 150 with a slightly thicker paint on the hood, which is good because the hood is the one that's going to take most of the abuse when you're driving on the highway and the stone is flying through the air. So I like the fact that the paint is a little bit thicker on this uh, hood here. Uh, and as I mentioned, the paint actually looks pretty good. Uh, um, perhaps the clear coat can be improved a little bit, but that could just be due to some oxidation of the paint. If they polish a little bit better, maybe the gloss will come out. So that's my quick comment on the paint thickness. Now let's take a look inside and see how good the quality is. So the fourth point is the interior quality in terms of fit and finish and the material selection. And I can tell you as an engineer, so far it looks really fantastic. I love this kind of rough uh, wooden uh, trims along the dash panel here. All the stitching seems to line up and I don't see any kind of defects over there. And I do my usual punch test to see if everything fits well and nothing is loose pretty solid uh, even the headliner which sometimes is loose in other vehicles and brands absolutely solid and I even love the, um, the fact that this is Al Alcantara or the suede look on the entire front uh, headliner which is often a very expensive option on other models and other brands so interior fit and finish looks really good I haven't heard any squeaks or rattles when I'm driving when I grab something nothing is loose and uh, looks pretty good I think so uh, interior fit and finish and quality is also up to my standard the fifth point you should know is this incredible amount of power and torque, 835 horsepower and 908 
pound-foot of torque coming out of the quad motor system, which is what we have here in this particular R1S. And that allows this vehicle to accelerate from zero to 60 in just mere 3.1 seconds, which is almost like a Porsche 911 territory here. So can you imagine having a large three-row SUV that can accelerate as brisk and as aggressive as a Porsche 911, which is really difficult to believe. So this thing really takes off because of amazing amount of power and torque. And even on the lower models, you still get plenty of power and torque, definitely not as much as this one, uh, which is just outstanding. And to be honest, just out of this world. The sixth point is just like all other Rivians, we get a, a trunk in the front, which is called Frank. And there's a little button here and the whole thing opens electronically, which is great. And space is pretty good. I, I believe it's about 11 cubic feet or so. And um, you can actually open this, and which gives you even more space underneath. So this is something that is a true advantage for electric vehicles, when, whether it's a truck or the SUV, like in this case, because you have so much cargo space and so much storage space, something that we just simply cannot get in um, ICE or internal combustion engine vehicles. But even with some other electric cars, they don't always give you a front. I recently drove a high-end Mercedes-Benz electric car and you couldn't even open the hood, so there was no front. So I'm glad that Riven has this space in the front and then I'll also show what's happening in the back. The seventh point is the rear tailgate area, which is interesting because we have a split tailgate system here and just underneath the V here, you just touch the button to open the hatch and then you have the secondary uh, tailgate here that you press to open much like in Range Rover, but also in some of the older Lexus LX and Land Cruisers, we used to have a split tailgate. And frankly, I actually really like that because when this is up, uh, not only is this smaller and therefore faster to open and close, but you also get kind of a, a miniature trunk situation here with a lip so that things don't fall off. Uh, and obviously, if you want to load up something long, you just once again open this, fold down the third row and the second row, and you can put uh, put it a big item in the back. So I really like the tailgate design and I wish that more manufacturers kept this design because very few manufacturers do this these days. The eighth point is that even behind the third row of seat you actually get storage space. Not a lot of space in here but you get a first aid kit and this is actually for the air compressor that goes in here. So yes you do get a full air compressor as well. And the ninth thing is that you get a tremendous amount of space once you fold down all the seat. The third row can be folded just by um, pressing on the tab here. Pushing it is not electronic or electric, but not too difficult because the headrest also fold down automatically. That's already pretty big space, but now I can also use this button to fold down the second row. And look at that, pretty well flat. I think almost completely flat. And this is as good as you're going to get in terms of a three row SUV. Most manufacturers are not able to have a flat cargo space all the way from here to there. And I suppose if you were to have to open, keep this open for a longer item, then yeah, that's a pretty long place. Uh, you can probably just put an air mattress there and sleep if you're camping as well. The 10th point is that you do have a pretty easy access to the third row of seat, which by the way, is reasonably roomy by uh, pushing this and slide in, you can get in, not too bad. However, to, when you put this back, it doesn't remember the uh, actual seating position. You have to use a lever here to recline again. So that's a bit of a hassle, but entry and exit is not bad considering that um, oftentimes people do not like to go into the third row of seat. But in this case, it's not too bad at all. The 11th point is that the second row of seat is adjustable forward and backward quite a bit actually. And when it's all the way back, that's pretty good space in terms of my knee room shoulder room and actual hip room is also very good and most of all the seats are very comfortable. The 12th point is the fixed uh, moon roof or pana room right here which is huge. It goes all the way from almost edge to edge, front all the way back to here and because this is SUV versus the truck version this is expanded even more. It's a beautiful view especially uh, when you're at night if you're able to see the stars sort of thing but you cannot open this and you cannot adjust the um, the darkness or the tint of this uh, panel roof, it stays fixed and darkness stays fixed as well. The 13th point is that uh, all Rivian comes with air suspension and you can put it in what we call the kneeling mode. And so when the vehicle comes to a stop, you actually lower itself so that uh, it's easier to get in and out. You can see how close this is. So obviously you don't wanna drive like this, but it does make it a lot easier to hop in and out because the entire vehicle is lower. 
when you're stepping and you're ready to go, it uh, then goes up higher again, depending on what height you've selected. So I think the, this height adjustment based on air suspension works really well on the Rivians. Fourteenth point is something maybe you've seen already, but uh, all Rivians has this built-in flashlight, which is super bright. But the interesting thing is the actual cell in here is identical to the cell that's actually used in this particular vehicle. So I'm gonna just open it right here. And this is the actual battery cell that's used to power this vehicle. In fact, in this particular R1S, there's 7,777 of these cells inside. So I think executive purposely chose 7777 as a lucky number, but I thought it was really cool that the actual uh, flashlight is using the same battery cell as the one that's in the vehicle. And I can just put this away here and it goes back in here. It automatically charges. And even if you leave it on, it will turn itself off when you put it back into the storage. The 15th point is the fact that it comes with the Bluetooth speakers, which is automatically hidden in here. It charges when you put it into the storage. And uh, you know what? It's a pretty massive uh, Bluetooth speakers. It's not your ordinary small one that you carry around. But this thing is pretty big and it sounds absolutely amazing. So I think if you have to buy something like this, it probably costs you a few hundred dollars normally in the store, but this is custom made for Rivian. The 16th point is that like most Teslas, almost all the controls are embedded inside the infotainment system. So even moving the steering wheel up and down or uh, this way requires me to push the, my name and the profile, push the steering wheel, and I can use this dial to adjust up and down or to go forward and backwards. So yeah, it can be done, no problem, and you get used to it, but I think there's just too many things that are on the infotainment system, making it a little bit difficult because uh, almost nothing is in the form of a button. I can't even lock or unlock the doors without going here and using the button. And once again, when you're used to this, it's not a problem, but for those of you who are used to having real physical buttons and knobs, you might not like this system. The 17th thing is the stereo system in this particular R1S. And because this is a top of line, we get the Meridian system for the Meridian elevation. And it's perhaps one of the best sounding stereo system I've ever heard in a SUV. The 18th point is to adjust the airflow. I have to go in here and guess what? The direction of the airflow can be controlled by just moving your finger like this which is really cool, uh, but at the same time, you have nothing physical to operate or to use. So once again, if you're a kind of techie person, then you're going to love this system. If you're old fashioned switch and button kind of person, you might get frustrated. The 19th point is that the app for Rivian is pretty useful because I can lock and unlock and also do things like sound alarm, open the hood and vent the windows all within this app. And because it's using Bluetooth, as long as I'm in the Bluetooth range, it happens quickly. There's no delay like you find in many apps from other automakers. So I really like the fact that this app is efficient and quick. The 20th point is like many other electric cars these days, there's no start or on off button for motor to start up. So when you finish here, you just walk away and you, you will automatically shut down. And when you come in, you just step on the brake and it will restart and ready to go. And that's uh, actually a pretty good system once you get used to it. But uh, I do find it a little bit frustrating because even outside, I can't physically like touch the doorknob or door handle to lock or unlock. It's all based on the app or uh, using the card key as well, which is also available or for you to walk away and it locks itself. So uh, once again, something you get used to it, but I think giving us a little bit more control and being able to start and stop with uh, an actual uh, motor button, as well as being able to physically lock and unlock is something that I would like to see in the future Rivian. The 21st thing is very interesting because a lot of reviewers have been complaining that uh, the regen braking uh, is only high or standard. And in the standard mode, it's still pretty strong. And when you let the brakes go, it goes zoom. And so if you're not used to the regen braking, uh, then you're going to be get very frustrated. But what I found out is that there is a bit of a hidden uh, method here, which is to pick the snow mode, and that will allow you to pick low in terms of brake region instead of standard or high. And while there is still a bit of a region, uh, when you let the brake go, it does slow down the steel. It's much better and much more comfortable and also more natural than in the other settings that's uh, available. So if I take out of the snow mode and put it in all-purpose mode, then I only have high or standard 
uh, region and uh, I don't like driving it that way you do get used to it but it just still feels a little bit unnatural because as soon as you let the brake go it goes hmm and that's something that uh, I know is uh, apparent with many other electric cars but I wish there was an option to turn off the region altogether which will shorten the range but makes it a little bit more natural in terms of driving this vehicle the 20 second thing is how the thing drives. Well, in terms of acceleration, as I mentioned before, zero to 60 in just over three seconds. So uh, immense amount of power and torque. You step on the accelerator and takes off like there's no tomorrow. And so that feeling is something you can't replicate with uh, gasoline engine cars because this is immediate amount of torque that comes through the system and therefore it just takes off and that makes this vehicle really fun to drive in terms of going forward and in terms of stepping on the accelerator but what about in terms of handling and the driving feel well that's my 23rd point which is the fact that it does drive very predictably it's reasonably agile and actually quite sporty for a large suv with a heavy weight and when i go around corners pretty aggressively it can hold its lines and it's very predictable and very balanced so I think that's actually really good uh, for some reason though it is a little bit rougher riding than the R1T which is a truck because perhaps that truck is a little bit longer uh, and also longer wheelbase in fact it's about 14 inches longer in terms of wheelbase and the R1T is 17 inches longer than this R1S so maybe that gives you a little bit more stability but the ride can be a little bit bumpy on the bumpy road although it's very smooth on the highway roads the 24th point it's about the tires which in this case it's a scorpion all-terrain tires but what i'm finding is that the Pirelli scorpion is more like a street uh, all-weather tires rather than a true off-road tires it is capable of going to off-road but it is designed for on-road driving so i found uh, the tire to be very very quiet and very smooth so great uh, choice for those people who wants to go occasional off-roading but still want a comfortable on-road feel from the tires the 25th and the last point is about the overall design. Whether you like it or not, this thing gets so much attention on the road, which was also the case with the R1T, the pickup truck version. Wherever I went, people either waved at me or gave me a thumbs up or they wanted to stop and talk to me because they love the design. So even though it is a traditional uh, three-row SUV in terms of configuration, uh, somehow Rivian managed to make it very unique. Uh, and this kind of the C pillar here is a very different design, for example, to the point where people look at it and say, that is a different SUV. I love it. I want to know what it is. I want to buy it. And so the designers knew exactly what to do to kind of evoke emotion and passion. And that's something that is missing in so many other SUVs. So uh, my hat's off to Rivian for designing something that people desire, that people are inspired by and to be able to do this in such a short time and come up with a fully electric SUV and also a pickup truck while all the other traditional automakers have been falling behind in bringing these things to the market. Yes, it is very expensive and therefore it's not for everyone. Most of you guys might not want to spend this kind of money. It's over $130,000 here in Canada as it is equipped. Uh, but if you can afford it, you know what? This is perhaps the best electric SUV out there because there aren't that many choices to begin with. And even if you were not to look at it as an electric vehicle and just look at it from a th three-row SUV perspective, it's still one of the best performing models I've come across in many decades of testing vehicles. So I hope you liked my video and I hope you learned something about Rivian, which is, yes, kind of a startup company, but I think it will continue to do well because there's so much uh, interest and so much passion behind this brand. And I think it will continue to improve as they also introduce more affordable models in the future. If you enjoyed my video, I would appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up or make some comments. And if you haven't done so yet, would you also kindly subscribe. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.